You're at Aquaba, D.C. Um, we're at Historic Bed and Breakfast in DuPont Circle. Well, I opened my first bed and breakfast 24 years ago in Brooklyn, and uh, I had been a guest at Bed and Breakfast and for about three years up to that point mm -hmm. and started to recognize that, hey, this is something I'd enjoy doing. Um, I love to entertain. I love to decorate. Um, I don't love to cook, but I've gotten good at breakfast. Um, I heard French toast so, this morning. Yeah, I had French toast this morning. Uh, so, yeah, so and it was also a way that I could fulfill this childhood fantasy that I had. I wanted to have a home that I loved and a city that I loved for each season of the year. But so that was my vision. Uh -huh. And um, the DC location where we are today was my second location. I started in Brooklyn. You're actually from Washington, DC. I am originally. a native Washingtonian. There are a few of us here, yes. There really aren't that many. No. Everyone you meet in Washington is from somewhere Someplace else. Someplace else, exactly. Can you tell me about growing up here? Um, I loved growing up here. And the funny thing about growing up in DC is that as a youngster, I, I really didn't understand the political power of DC. And then I went to Howard University here in Washington as well. I think it's once I got there that I started to appreciate how much other people appreciated where I am mm -hmm. and where I was. And so uh, I majored in journalism. So this was definitely the place to be um, in journalism in Washington, DC. You majored in journalism. You did not major in hospitality. <laughs> no. Um, that was maybe more innate, but Take me through your journalistic career. You reached the pinnacle. Well, I, I was very focused and I'm goal oriented. And I had this vision of being the editor in chief of Essence Magazine because it was the publication that sat on the coffee table in my family home. Mm -hmm. It proclaimed me beautiful as a black woman. Every single month I could look on the cover, see someone who looked like me. Mm -hmm. And so I dreamed of doing that. I always loved fashion. So I said, this is perfect. I can do the journalism thing and the fashion thing. So I majored in journalism, minored in fashion, and then actually became editor-in-chief of Essence Magazine. This property was built in 1890. It's on five floors. It has all of its original wood detail, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, all it's the intricate. stick work is very intricate. The original hardwood floors. Every room has a fireplace. But the detail in here is superb. So our goal was to really restore and celebrate all of this detail because this is really your house when you're here. And so I'm careful about that. I'm careful about not having too many like doodads all over the place because people need a place to put their things down. So when I, I've slept in every single room, right? Uh -huh. Really? <laughs> every, oh yeah. Because it's when you're lying in the bed and you look up and you go, hmm, that wall needs something, you know? Or, and I take my suitcase when I stay and I put it down just like a guest and I go, I didn't have enough room for my makeup or whatever it is, you know? And that's how I know I need to make a tweak because I want to make sure that everything that the guests could possibly need is there, right? We're about, you know, anticipation of what they wow, need. She's wonderful. <laughs> People just want to be taken care of wherever they are. And I actually think that being in an urban environment is even more of an incentive for someone to come to stay because they're here for work. They've been staying in a box hotel. One room looks like the next room. You know, no one's making them a warm, hot breakfast and putting it in front of them in the morning. You know, they're picking up a muffin and coffee as they're dashing out. So to be able to have that infused with your business, mm -hmm. that little bit of pleasure, I think is amazing. This is, um, I think you, the word you used was Afrocentric, mm -hmm. um, that you feature black authors, um, that you try to infuse that sense of history and, and culture. And culture. Yeah, I think, um, so there are people who come and they don't see any of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. They don't see those subtle hints of culture, right? But those who are craving it and there's so many people of color who feel invisible and so when they come and they go oh there's a there's one pic there's a picture on the wall mm -hmm. that looks like me or wow they've got a copy of you know ss magazine on the you know it's just that little infusion um so this particular property in dc is celebrating the rich history and contributions of African-American authors. So it has a literary theme. And I like to theme the ends because I love to decorate. So theming it gives me a jumping off point 
for the decoration. So if it's Zora Neale Hurston, I know that she was all that. And mm -hmm. so it's got to be grand. And Langston Hughes was fine. So his room <laughs> is just fine. You know, it's chocolate brown and just beautiful. So that gave me the springboard to talk about it. And so, so often in African-American culture, when we talk about contributions, people think about our athletic ability mm -hmm. and our, um, our athletes become heroes and, um, and entertainers. But the word, the keeper of the story is so important. And so that's why we celebrate African-American authors at this location.